just roughly half of Nigeria's population of about 200 million people are connected to the national grid. This means the other half, unless they have an alternate power source, are permanently in darkness, unable to enjoy the many perks of electricity and not engaged in any work powered by electricity. For the half of the connected population, electricity is rationed and unreliable as about 90 million people have to share just 5,000 megawatts of electricity. Going by global standard of 100,000 megawatts per 1 million people, Nigeria needs at least 200,000 megawatts for everyone to have power round the clock. Ghana with 30 million people generates about 2,500 megawatts. South Africa with 60 million people generates 50,000 megawatts. Egypt with 100 million people, half of Nigeria, generates over 180,000 megawatts. In the World Bank Doing Business 2020 report, Nigeria was ranked 169 out of 190 countries in the Getting Electricity Indicator. And electricity access is considered one of the major constraints for private sector development. In 2013, the government privatized the generation and distribution segments of the electricity supply chain. There are currently six generating companies with 23 grid-connected generation plants spread across the country and 11 distribution companies serving different parts of the country. The Transmission Company of Nigeria is however under the complete control of the federal government. Though privatized, the sector is yet to deliver results. There is still a big mismatch in the generation, transmission and distribution. While Nigeria currently has an overall generation capacity of 12,522 megawatts, only around 4,500 megawatts is generated on most days. This is due to the several constraints including lack of gas supply and the lack of infrastructural capability of the transmission company to evacuate all the available capacity and convey to the distribution companies. There's a lot of blame game going on. The generating companies fault the transmission company for evacuating below what is generated and the transmission company insisting they evacuate more if the distribution companies will improve their networks and distribute more power to the consumers. As it is, even if the generating companies generate electricity at their full capacity, power would be stranded on transmission lines and not reach consumers due to the obsolete infrastructure of the transmission company and the distribution companies. Countries around the world have addressed electricity challenges with decentralized systems by leveraging local energy sources and addressing energy deficits in individual communities. Energy experts say that the transmission grid in its present form of fragile and obsolete critical infrastructure is too large to be managed as a single entity and there have been several recommendations that it should be decentralized but the government is reluctant to decentralize the grid. According to many stakeholders, unbundling the transmission company would attract private investment that could solve the problem of dilapidated infrastructure. Many others believe that the answer could lie in the sun. Nigeria has great potential to develop its solar power energy due to its high amount of sunlight. Estimates by the World Bank suggest that investing in solar-powered plants could increase the availability of electricity to almost 80 million people who currently have none. In the beginning, this may mean building tiny solar panels that cover only minimal household needs, then scale up for businesses by building small-scale mini-grid systems. The power sector, aside from failing to perform, has been in financial crisis requiring perpetual intervention funds from the government. While the sector has been snowed under by a financial crisis, reportedly hovering around 4 trillion naira, the federal government has spent over 2 trillion naira as subsidy or intervention in recent years. Alarmingly, 
both the government and private sector consumers do not settle their bills when due, and this affects not only the distribution companies, but also the generating companies. According to a new report from The Guardian newspaper, there is an outstanding 100 billion Naira electricity bills owed by the federal and state governments. The failure of the government arms to pay the bills has been reported to be due to misappropriation of funds by ministries, departments and agencies which have worsened the liquidity crisis in the nation's electricity sector. The cost of our power deficit is high and it goes beyond money spent on alternate sources when affordable. Lives have been lost repeatedly due to fumes from generator sets and families have been wiped out due to fire incidences from candles and other alternate sources. The after effect of lack of power is seen in compromised educational attainment, substandard hospital operations and emergency services that lead to higher mortality rates, lack of opportunities and non-competitive growth of the economy. This high cost of power has made Nigeria one of the harshest environments for doing business as electricity takes 40% of production cost, while China, for instance, spends less than 10% of its production cost on electricity. Consequently, many entrepreneurs who cannot afford self-generated power have been forced to close business. In addition, poor power quality in the form of erratic and inadequate power supply has been the major reason cited by many of the multinationals that wound up their operations in Nigeria, which further worsened the level of unemployment. The lack of reliable power has stifled economic activity and private investment and job creation, which is ultimately what is needed to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty, says Shobam Chaudhuri, World Bank Country Director for Nigeria. No country has achieved sustained economic growth without improving access to cleaner and modern forms of energy and the services that they provide. The government is targeting a 90% electrification rate by 2030 and is currently attempting both grid and off-grid solutions to solve its power problem. But stakeholders are bothered about the regulatory environment and bureaucracies in the sector. There's a clamor for policies that allow greater participation of states in power generation, allow tariffs that balance the protection of consumers and the interests of investors. Energy access for all will not only improve the quality of life, but it will also reduce the teeming mass of unemployment and create opportunities for women, youths, children, both in urban and rural areas. Without reliable power, Nigeria is unable to leapfrog its productivity, increase our export competitiveness, and promote human development. Mm -hmm.